Hi, I'm Teo Nicolakis with Audioholics, and in this first of a two-part review, I'll be covering Focal's Scala Utopia Evo loudspeaker. Stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, please be sure to put any comments or questions below. Let's get started. Welcome back. In part one of this review, I'll be focusing on the Focal Scala Utopia Evo speakers from a two-channel point of view with engineering and design, measurements, listening impressions, and conclusions. Part two is a unique review opportunity as I'll be incorporating the Scala Utopia Evos with a Focal Viva Utopia Color Evo Center. Focal's 1000 series in-wall and in-ceiling speakers, a pair of RBH's reference SV1212 NR subwoofers, Focal's Astral 16 processor, and three name NAP350 monoblock amplifiers. These are all gonna be together for really a once in a lifetime full on 7.2.6 Focal centered home theater review. All this promises to be a really fun ride. Uh, what do you say we get started? What's utopia? The etymological root of the word utopia comes from the Greek, of course. U, which means no, and topos, which means place. This no place came to our English vernacular through Sir Thomas More's publication. Utopia in 1516, which described an imaginary island that had reached perfection in law, politics, and other aspects of life. Focal's choice of the word utopia is no accident, neither is the word scala. By labeling its flagship headphone and speaker lineup as utopia, Focal wants to put us all on notice that when they designate a speaker or headphone with this exclusive label, it's transporting you and me, the listener, into a world of sonic bliss. While I don't think that a perfect speaker exists just yet, Focal Scala Utopia, by any measure, is a superb work of sonic engineering. And since you're wondering, Scala, again, with this Greek etymology, means ladder. So metaphorically speaking, the Scala is what I would say the bridge into Focal's flagship lineup. The Focal Utopia family falls into what I'd call the luxury high-end audio category. That's a general category where ultra high performance, design, aesthetics, and exclusivity come together. Any products in this category, preamps, amplifiers, speakers, they're just a completely different animal. And they are often artistic statements as much as they are high performance. The $39,998 a pair Focal Scala Utopia Evo is the entry point into the Focal Utopia tower speaker lineup. Uh, the Scala is a three-way speaker with a nominal impedance of 8 ohms and a minimum impedance of 3.2 ohms. The crossover frequencies are 220 hertz and 2.4 kilohertz, and the sensitivity is rated at 92 dB. It's pretty easy to drive. Now, while the Scala are on paper somewhat easy to drive, allow me to caution you that if you're considering the Scala Utopia, that you do pair the speakers with amplifiers that are stable into two ohm loads. So while it's a 3.2 ohm minimum, the Utopia line is notorious for presenting an amplifier load as low as 1.8 ohms. Now, below the Scala sit the Diablo Utopia Color Evo and the 18,000 Viva Utopia Color Evo center channel. The Color Evo is designed as a center channel with a WTMW horizontal design. The tweeter mid-range assembly actually rotates 90 degrees so you can run it as both a center or as a freestanding large monitor speaker in a home theater setup. The Scala Utopia Evo 
is a three-way speaker design with an 11-inch bass driver. The $76,000 a pair Maestro, one level up, adds a second 11-inch bass driver and is designed for larger rooms in the Scala. The $150,000 Stella Utopia EM Evo introduces an MTM three-way speaker design. And finally, the granddaddy of them all, the $280,000 a pair Grande Utopia EM Evo, which is a four-way speaker design and features a massive 16-inch woofer. The acoustic focus timing of that speaker, which I'll talk about in a bit with the Scala, is adjustable and plays down to 18 hertz with its minus 6 dB, hitting at 14 hertz and 94 dB sensitivity. The Scala's weigh in at 187 pounds each, while that eclipses the 146 pound weight of my Revel Ultima 2 Salons, they do fall shy of the 215 pound weight of my RBH SVTR Towers. The Scala's shipping box comes with a protective plywood sheet that doubles as a ramp for sliding the speaker out of the box. Actually pretty innovative. And what's brilliant is that the Scalas have wheels built into their base to glide them down the plywood ramp effortlessly and move them into position. You can then attach the included spikes once you've played the room and attach the spikes to the base so you have the speakers then in their final location. The Scalas are 49 and 8 inches tall, they're 15 and a half inches wide, and 26 and 38 inches deep. They're pretty deep. The Scalas are shorter than both my Salon 2s and the RBH SVTRs, and they come in seven different colors and a natural wood grain option. Remember we talked about what you get with a luxury speaker with making a statement, integration, and aesthetics. Focal gets their target clientele with this speaker. So someone looking at the Focal Scala Utopia is looking to make a visual aesthetic statement with these speakers, not just a sonic one. The Focal Scala's build quality is fantastic. The Utopia's cabinet is absolutely inert. It's comprised of precision cut MDF panels and Focal uses vibration cartography, aka heat maps, to identify the areas where they need initial additional internal bracing to minimize resonances. The front baffle I don't know if you can see it here, but it's slightly curved to address diffraction of the baffle from the drivers. Each driver is housed in its own acoustically isolated assembly in the cabinet. Putting the driver in its own cabinet assembly helps mitigate the effects of one driver on the other within the cabinet structure. Each enclosure, as you can see, is both physically isolated from the others and sports a unique contour that both angles the drivers and introduces passive time alignment into the cabinet design. Focal calls the cabinet's angled contour focus time. In this passive time alignment design, the tweeter is set back from the mid-range and the mid-range is set back slightly from the base driver. Focal says that with the physics of the drivers, the high frequencies release quicker off the tweeter and that they have optimized the cabinet to deliver all the frequencies at the same time to the listening position. The drivers in the Scala and the Utopia line in general are Focal's flagship W composite sandwich cone. Now, the drivers are comprised of two sheets of woven glass tissue sandwiched onto a foam core. The composite driver has the lightness, rigidity, and damping to provide control over the frequency response curve that they're covering. And the W cone is a superior material to something like a Kevlar or Aramid cone that are in Focal's other lineups. The Scala likewise sports a large magnetic structure around the mid-range driver. Focal uses an array of double-stacked ferrite rings around the voice coil in a hexagonal layout. The cap on the rounded magnets looks like a flower, so they call it flower power is uh, what they call that magnet design. If you have a chance to listen to the Scalas in person, set up properly in the right size room, you'll be struck by how deep and controlled the bass is with just an 11 inch woofer in a ported design. I mean, guys, this is 
truly a full range speaker that plays down solidly to 26 hertz. The open design has another advantage too in that it helps cool voice call with the movement of the air from the mid-range driver. The harder the driver works, the more air gets forced through the open vents. Let's talk a little bit about the beryllium tweeter. Beryllium is arguably one of the best, if not the best materials to make tweeters due to the combination of lightness, extreme stiffness, higher frequency output, and lower distortion. The breakup frequency on a beryllium tweeter happens beyond the limits of our human hearing. The Utopia line uses a special 1.1 inch pure beryllium inverted dome tweeter reserved solely for the Utopia speaker lineup. The Utopia tweeter is different than any other beryllium tweeters found in any of Focal's other speaker lines. The back of the Scala's bass has a tweeter and bass jumper. The primary audience of the Scala, of course, is two-channel audio files. And unless it's something like an Anthem STR, two-channel preamps, especially those in this luxury lineup, lack any room correction. Uh, so the Scala has jumpers that allow you to adjust the bass and high frequency of response to the speaker up or down by one dB. I took measurements with the jumpers in their different positions and they're fundamentally transparent, which I'll show you more in the measurements section. The heart of my review uh, setup is Focal's Astral 16 processor. The Astral 16 is based on Storm Audio's software platform and sports audio components that have been upgraded to meet Focal's specifications. While the Astral has 12 channels of onboard Pascal Class D amplification, I drove the Focal's with a pair of Name 350 New Classic monoblock amplifiers. I did my initial listening impressions without Dirac engaged on the Astral 16. However, since I positioned this review for us enthusiasts who will be using it for both two-channel and home theater applications, and since we're educated to the advantages of modern room correction, I did the overwhelming majority of my listening with Dirac engaged. With that said, there are seven aspects to the Focal Scala Utopia sound that really made an impression on me. First, the mid-range is magical. If you can't get the mid-range right in the speaker, nothing else matters. And Focal has absolutely nailed it with the Scala. Second, every time the Scala breathes in music, there's just no sound of the cabinet's enclosure. In other words, there's no boxiness that you get as you do with some other speakers. Third, the Focal's image is exceptionally well um, defined and does so with a large, wide sweet spot. I found the off-axis performance to be solid. Moreover, any image that the Focal's painted were large and lifelike. It was uncanny how many times in my theater room here that my senses reacted to that point in particular about the size of the image. And naturally, they just completely disappeared in this room. There was no sense that you had two speakers going. There was always a canvas that was painted. Fourth, the Focals reproduced music effortlessly, which leads me to my next point, that fifth, the Scala are really a dynamic speaker as you ex expect with their sensitivity. They just came across more dynamic than my Ultima two salons though, they don't quite compare to the unrivaled dynamics of something like a Perlison 7, uh, S7T. Six, this is a true full range speaker that can handle every musical note with ease and authority. And here's the case in point. You've heard uh, Gene Della talk over the years about being careful with LFE channels to speakers that you know, some of these speakers can't handle it and you might damage them. And conversely, talking about some high-end speakers that are absolutely able to handle an LFE channel. Well, 
the scalas are exactly that latter part. In fact, Vocal explicitly asked me to configure the Astral 16 processor to send the LFE signal concurrently to both the scalas and the RBH reference subs for movies. How's that? Not many speaker manufacturers would dare to do that. That wasn't the case with Focal. Seventh, the Focal's painted an intimate image close to the speaker's front boundary. Now, that presentation was exacerbated by the movie screen that I really had right between the speakers. When I removed the screen, the Focal's had a slightly relaxed uh, and, of course, deeper and defined soundstage. Finally, room size pairing. I think Focal did a really good job of pairing and choosing the Scala to my room size, which is roughly 16 feet wide by almost 26 feet long. While the Maestros, the next level up, also would have worked fine in this size room, the Scala's really worked well to move air in something of this size. So just something to keep in mind if you're considering uh, the Scala's for yourself. Now, allow me to put some of these comments into context. London Grammar's Wasting My Young Years has tremendous energy showcased by Hannah Reed's energizing, powdery, smooth vocals. Listening to Hannah Reed's voice through the Focals was powerful, emotionally engaging, dynamic, and just enthralling. The Focals dynamic presentation just nailed her voice. And something as simple as I was listening to various tracks on Dominique Fil Amis Birds had such realism when you have the claps in that song. And the very sensation of the timbre and the dynamics and the realism of something as simple as the clapping of hands really came across with the vocals. My point being is whether it was something as focused and a focal point as the main vocals or something as subtle as the clapping of hands or instruments that are elsewhere in the soundstage, the vocals just had this uncanny knack of being able to present them in such a realistic way. And then, on a dime, they had this ability to just ratchet down and capture soft nuances, and they were able to play just both ends of that spectrum exceptionally well. And maybe that is one of the reasons why I was so drawn to the Focals during my review period. I could fire them up with U2s where the streets have no names and just send it cranking, and they could energize my room instantly. And then I could turn to another song, slow it down to something like, I don't know, Dido's uh, Some Kind of Love, and they could just create this beautiful, intimate session for listening. Um, if, if you've never heard Ibey's River, uh, then fire it up on your system, and then I want you to imagine when I say that the opening bass lines from that song literally jolted me in my seat. No way was I expecting the Focals to convey the bass lines with such authority, and yet they did it without any sub. My point being is this is not any sort of wimpy speaker unable to deliver prodigious bass, especially when it's properly sized to the right room. Now, I conducted two separate listening sessions with five of my good friends who have a real love for audio. They own BMW Paradigm, Definitive Tech Speakers, well-known brands, well-respected brands over time. We played Tin Pan Alley, uh, Blue Rondo a la Turk, uh, Halo, Limit to Your Love, uh, Hotel California, Mother's Pride, Little Sadie, Time, and you name it. Every single person during and after, walked away just mesmerized by the Scalas. We spent the better part of four hours listening, and every person said, this is the kind of experience where you think you're listening to your songs for the first time. You know what I mean with that experience? And that's exactly what happened here. How would I compare the Focal Scala Utopias to, let's say, the RBH SVTRs, which I also have as the mainstay in this room? 
my simple comments are that I much preferred the Scala's mid-range and top end to the RBHs. I felt as though the Scala's were more dimensional, transparent, and they also had a broader sweet spot. Female vocalists especially resonated with me far more with the Scala's than with the RBHs. But when it comes to bass performance, the RBH SVTRs will dominate virtually any speaker up to and into the $50,000 range. The SVTR's prodigious bass with those dual 12-inch drivers just outmatched the Scalas in both frequency response and their ability to pressurize my room. However, and here's the key, the Scalas really did do a fine job throughout their frequency range. The frequency ranges of this, that the Scalas covered were exceptionally tight, they were detailed, and they were really dynamic. In fact, if the Scalas are on your radar and you're thinking of pairing them with a subwoofer, then I would really caution you to be very picky about what sub to pair them with because of the Scala's high level of performance. While, of course, Focal offers their own Utopia subwoofer, which I should mention, I didn't have a chance to audition that as part of this larger review. So based on what I have pretty intimate experience with, I'd suggest looking at something like a Perlison D212S or D215S. Those subwoofers with their incredibly low group delay, low distortion, high output, have the speed, finesse, articulation, and slam to mate really well with the Focals. If you remember, the Perlissons I mentioned are the first subs that I actually found mated with my Ultima 2 Salons. Now, speaking of the Revel Ultima 2 Salons, they were a far better comparison to the Focal Utopias with their sound signature. When it comes to high-end, high-performance luxury audio, you really start to get down to nuances that matter to the prospective buyer or listening. And the Focals were more dynamic than the Revels, given they're obviously a more sensitive speaker. The Revels, however, will play down lower, though I'm not sure that the Salon 2's bass is more satisfying, ironically. The mid-range in the Focals seemed a bit fuller than the Revels, and the Revels came across a little bit, perhaps, um, more polite in the mid-range. Now that impression may have everything to do with the differences between the rooms and I'm also playing them with different electronics and different, different amplifiers. Ordinarily I'd take the Scala Utopia outside and perform some ground plane measurements. Well that standard approach was really impossible given the Scala's size and unwieldy 187 pounds. Not to mention the fact that my review samples were also pulled from A stock, not show samples, so I need to be extra careful with them. What we therefore decided to do is take in-room measurements while emphasizing that the measurements would be limited by both the room and also the room treatment. Uh, therefore, my goal here is just to show you a general flavor of the Scala's in-room response with and without Dirac. Let's first start with the jumpers uh, on the Scala's tweeter and bass performance. As you can see, the jumpers are completely transparent. Each position impacts the signal by about one dB up or down from the neutral position. Let's also remember that the speaker itself cannot amplify the signal, and what's really happening is an attenuation based on the speaker's voicing. The plus position increased the speaker's top end by one dB. In the minus one position, attenuation is supposed to attenuate it by a full decibel, though mine was just shy at 0.8 dB. The jumper starts to impact the Scala's top end and frequency response right above two kilohertz. The jumper is a good tuning point if you prefer to have the speakers at a greater distance, uh, want to have some uh, lesser toe-in, and maybe a bit more presence from the tweeters off-axis response, or if you're gonna be placing them behind an acoustically transparent screen and wanna mitigate some of the attenuation effects of the screen. Now, the practical impact of the bass jumpers was actually very minor in my room. The jumper differential uh, shows that the measurements impact starting below mm, 300 hertz going down to about 60 hertz. And as with the tweeter jumper, it's about 1 dB attenuation with each jumper position. 
Next, let's look at the Vocal Scala Utopia's horizontal in-room off-axis performance at 15, 30, 45, and 60 degree measurements taken at one meter. So we'll need to ignore, of course, all the lower mid-range and bass frequencies. You'll get a very wide sweet spot, which we experienced for both two-channel and home theater. Next, let's look at the left and right speakers at the main listening position. Here, I took a nine-point measurement at the main listening position, mimicking the microphone placement of the Dirac calibration, and you can certainly see that the Scala has an exceptionally smooth in-room response. Some of the room modes come through at the lower frequencies. Here you can see the average response of the right and left speakers in room, and notice how closely the left and right speakers track each other above 200 hertz. And also notice how well the speakers perform throughout their rated frequency response. Don't get the misimpression that the top end is dull from the nine point average measurement, far from it. The top end on the Scala Utopia was simply superlative. As you know, the nine point measurement adds vertical and horizontal off axis measurements, in this case about 12 feet away from the Scala. Let's look at the single point measurement at the main listening position and you'll see that there is no aggressive drop off with the tweeter. What you have is a rise in the tweeter response peaking between six to seven kilohertz. Dirac just really smooths that out. For some who think that the vocals might sound bright, you can address that without room correction by lessening the toe in and using the tweeter adjustment. The Scala really does load well into a room and engaging Dirac, it just smooths everything out and naturally tightens up the speaker's bass response. I measured usable bass output right at the rated 27, you know, down about 26 hertz. This is truly a full range reference speaker. All in all, the Scala Utopia is an exceedingly well-designed speaker whose in-room measured response um, just gets better with a Dirac calibration. What's my take of the Focal Scala Utopia Evo? What I'll tell you is my impression is that they really do reflect the best of the Focal brand. They're expensive, though they are right in line with a high-end luxury audio speaker of this caliber. The Scala Utopias are designed and made in France. They're impeccable build quality, cutting edge driver technology and tweeter materials, aesthetics, design, performance, and of course their sound. Make them a bold statement piece to show off to family and friends, visually or audibly. And for the lucky owner, it's the means to just get lost in the music. I absolutely enjoyed my time with the Focal Scala Utopia. And in part two, we're gonna talk about these guys with their home theater prowess. And I'll tell you, it's just really a blast. Um, now, I think this is maybe the uh, best statement that I could offer. If you were to press me hard, I'd admit that the Scalas are actually the first speakers that I've had in my review setup that I would actually consider replacing my Revel Ultima 2 salons for. I really like them that much. I'm gonna be really sorry to see them go. And don't forget our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You'll get direct access to us, you can ask questions, and you can even suggest topics for future programs.